to allow this thing to be perpetrated. Borna will never ban flour. Would he ban flour when most black people or all black people use bread? But the Indians were able to say, look, the flour was banned because the Indians use flour when they have their religious function. I hold you speaking of Borna. You never live through Born America. I live through Born America. That stink. I, I, I don't want to use indecent language. That stinking man. That man suffer with so much anger. And, uh, he used all of those policies that, that he had. What have they, what, 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 what they... Why create a straw man? The answer is, in order to charge the straw man imaginary costs and penalties and fool the human James Martin into paying those amounts. These imaginary charges include income tax, council tax, inheritance tax, capital gains tax, road tax, import tax, value added tax, fuel levy, loan interest, bank charges, and anything else that full-time professionals can think up and are confident that you will not notice that you never agreed to pay. To allow this thing to be perpetrated. Boredom never ban flour. Would he ban flour when most black people or all black people use bread? But the Indians were able to say, look, the flour was banned because the Indians use flour when they have their religious function want to thank you for making it this far in the video but could you please take a few seconds if you haven't already to drop us a like it really helps to promote this content in the algorithm and if you haven't subscribed already hit the subscribe button it costs you nothing and you'll be able to have a notification every time we drop content like this i'll wait thanks right back into the content. And let me tell you what really happened. Robert McDavid knows this and he should have done something to stop it being perpetrated all the time. One, we don't grow flour here. We don't grow wheat here. We have a flour mill and we have to bring the wheat from abroad to have it done here and milled into flour. Some of you may not know what is PL 480. PL 480 was a partial grant by the United States government to Guyana. Instead of giving us money, they used to give us in the form of wheat so that it could be milled here into flour. When Comrade Burnham, our founder leader, decided to nationalize bauxite and sugar, the Americans and Europe became very angry with him. And at that time also, Dr. Jagan said he was giving Burnham critical support to nationalize these two industries and they said look we have no wheat to send to you you got to buy it in other words they suspend the P PL 480 and no wheat came to Guyana well Barnum had a very good Indian friend Mrs. Indira Gandhi the Prime Minister of India he turned to her then they said they will not give us any wheat unless we pay for it and he asked for assistance. Now, I was the solicitor for Bank of Baroda. In those days they had solicitor and barrister. Today they only have attorney at law. So, Mrs. Gandhi got the bank. Now, may I also say that the Bank of Baroda is a government bank, a government Indian bank. 
It's not Caesarine Bank, it's a solid bank. And what happened? Then Baroda in New York said, look, we will guarantee the payment of it. They said, no, we don't want no Kuli Bank to guarantee the money. We want an American bank. Mark, uh, the American government refused to send the wheat and and because they failed to send the wheat, we could mill it into flour. When at last we were able to get Barclays Bank, at that time they had a branch here, and they feared if they turned it down, we might have nationalized the bank then. What took place was Barclays Bank agreed to give this money for us to buy the wheat. And you know what happened? From the time they got from the time they got the money to buy the wheat, the next thing that happened, the ship had already left. And that is why and that is why it was said Bornham Banklow. It wasn't that he banned flour, he had no money to buy the flour. It's like if you go in the stores and you want a tin of sardine and you don't have the money, you can't get it. It's a simple story like that. But credence, misinformation, and whatever word you want to say, Barnum never banned flour. He had the money to buy it, and as a consequence, the the wheat did not come to Guyana for him to have it milled and for it to be sold in Guyana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope that this will set the record straight and come back. David knows this. He was there. He knew part of it at least if he didn't know all. So, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen and comrades for listening to me. Wow. See, I grew up hearing this thing. You know? I grew up hearing Born and Band Flower. I grew up hearing this thing all over the place. Not just from so-called black Guyanese, but Indian Guyanese, teachers in school, your friends in the street, regular people. People of um, esteem, older people, younger people, everybody you would hear saying the same thing. So this PL 480, right, that was mentioned. I never heard nothing about it. I never heard nothing about the PL before. So that information was SAS just gave. This information that bridged a lot of the um, the banks in my mind and helped me to understand certain things because I was thinking all the time that it was as was said till you know I mean I was just to give a little bit away I was born in the same year that the late great LFS Burnham transcended so it wasn't much that I could really say that I would have experienced of that time but you know as you're growing up you hear about it you um you know you have it in school as studies and stuff like that to research but this part here to be honest with you i did not know this was information for me so i had to bring it to the family and let you guys check it out and let's have a conversation about it in the comment section Barnum never banned flower he didn't have the money to buy it and because he privatized, or not really privatized, but nationalized the um the industry of bauxite and sugar, meaning the government took it over for their functionality. They were the ones that was, you know, running it at that time and say nationalize it. Right? Now, because he did that, the governments, the international governments, sanctioned for lack of a better word, or allegedly, right, gave a sanction to Diana that caused them not to be able to afford the wheat. So then they were without no wheat. So it's kind of like, look, 
he could look at the international bodies allegedly as the ones who caused the ban of flour in them days there. Because really, if they continue to give us the flour like they was always doing with PL480 and the way that SAS just explained to us, the great speaker of the House of Representatives and the House of Parliament, the speaker, the longest standing speaker in Guyana history, just explained to us that we didn't have the money at that time. And because we were so conveniently accustomed to the grant that we was getting of the free wheat that we was milling into flour, we couldn't find the finances we needed to front and to purchase the amount that the country needed. So it seemed at that time as if it was a ban, but it was really no ban. Look, you learn something new every day. Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Do you guys believe it was as the speaker just said? Or do you think that it was something else? And wherever you think it is, let me talk about it in the comment section. Hello, good morning. Morning. Turn on the thing in the background. Just let, me, let, me, yeah, let me turn on the thing. Hello, good morning. Turn on the thing in the background. Yes. Sir, you there? Yeah, I'm listening to Hello? you. Yeah, I'm listening. Um... I heard you speaking of Burnham. You never lived through Burnham area. I lived through Burnham area. That stink, I, I, I don't want to use indecent language. That stinking man, that man suffer with so much anger. And, uh, he used all of those policies that, that he had. What, have the, what, have, what, what, the Burnham, what have the Burnham era caused you to run to Trinidad? Yes. Okay. I get the, I get the accent and I see the numbers. It's like, yeah, letting you run for your fucking life. Yes, it's you know when you open your door in the morning through Burnham regime, you wasn't born that time. It's like you open your door in the desert. It's like dry sun, hot sun coming down on you to kill your mother cunt. That stink. Uh, sorry, sorry. I when I remember the hate that man caused Guyanese, and people still following that man, following the the, the, the teachings of these people. They have their own uh, own agenda. That man terrify Guyana. That stinker, I tell you. All right, Sorry about the indecent language. Thank you. Safe. Bye. So lots of people have extreme disdain for Burnham. I've never met anybody of a certain age. Like if you met a PNC, somebody, hey, Burnham, Burnham. And they, and they, they're fucking delusional. Nothing. No. All the positive arguments I've heard or the arguments that I would be willing to be receptive to is, well, Burnham was not of his time. He was great visionary. You just didn't know what you were fucking doing. Anybody could be a visionary. I could share ideas, a million ideas with you execution of those ideas, deliverance of those ideas. <laughs> it's very hard to be receptive to the disrespect and disdain that a person would just randomly have for a person who you know and from experiences, studies, and from just so many persons in society speaking on it from a real place and from a place of actually being there, the work that they would have put in for the country, the work that they put in for the persons that live within their constituencies, and then just for hearing another person speak on their legacy like that, and they're not even be able to speak for themselves, it's kind of disheartening. You know, to hear persons like keep calls on your name when you would have put in so much work while you was alive to try to make things better for, for these same persons to have the experiences that they're having right now. It's kind of hard, but that's life. And that's the part of great men 
He always said a great man is never honored in his own house, right? So it seemed like a lot of our founding fathers, a lot of the great stalwarts of the country, never seem to get the honor and respect that they deserve for the things and the great things that they would have done. Remember, none of us are perfect in this so-called world of experience, right? Because, look, there's so many things that persons would even say about the great uh, Dr. Chetty Jagan. And I don't even think that's right in the same way because who are we? Like, look at how much work these men would have put in. Look at how many sacrifices they would have made. And these men already lived their entire legacy and life. And these great things are in their record still. We still in this world here, we don't know who we legacy can be. Who are we to stand in judgment? When we're still here experiencing this life, who knows what's going to be said about us when we transcend? And would we even reach to these great achievements that these men would have achieved in their time? In their time without social media, in their time without cell phones, in their time without all of this modern technology that we are able to enjoy these days within a country that they helped to stabilize and foundations that they helped to found, right? What do you guys think? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Do you think that that's fair for persons to be speaking in the way that that caller was speaking? Do you think that that's fair for them to be speaking on the late great president like that? On this channel, we're building a community of scholars. We're building a collective of persons who are into study and who are into understanding themselves from a holistic place. Now, this book, The Straw Man, is going to get into the illusion and is going to get into the decoding of the Guyanese, the culture, the person that you was given to represent the illusion that you believe is real, the conversation that you might never hear nowhere else on the streets of Guyana, you're going to hear it right here in a few minutes. It's going to give you an insightful perspective, an esoteric perspective on the decodings of what your birth certificate really is and how it places you into a system of chattel slavery from birth to death. Now, this is a conversation that a lot of persons might not be ready for. But I'm from a country, I'm from a place, I'm from a demographic of persons that are scholars. I'm from a demographic of persons who are into understanding themselves. I'm from a demographic of persons who are into learning so this information is information that I know that we would enjoy. And I know that we will take it even further. A lot of persons might even read the book before. I might even be able to comment in the comment section about certain insights that they would have gotten from the book. And if you are one of those persons, definitely please do share. This information that I'm going to put out here right now is going to help our conversations to be deeper than most of the channels that are online right now on this platform. We're gonna get into the conversation of the straw man, the illusion of the corporate entity that was created as at birth to represent you. There's a lot, a lot that we did not learn in high school and some of us don't even learn in university. Sometimes you just gotta do your own digging, your own research so that you could gather the wisdom that you need to move in a way that most of the world can't move. We cannot sit back and hope that everything is going to come to us because guess what? To him who much is given, much is required. And last I checked, Guyana is the richest country in the world. So it's required that we should be some of the smartest persons in the world. And this information will help to unlock those colonizing chains from your brain and help you to really see the occult understanding behind 
the straw man illusion of the Guyanese. Let's get into this. Let's understand what a Guyanese really is. Then let's start at the beginning and find out where your straw man came from and why you should care about it. It all started when your parents had a happy event and you entered the world. You don't know exactly when that was because you were not aware of the days of the week, the months of the year, or even what year it was. Even after some months had gone by, you still were not aware of these things. But by that time, your straw man had already been created, and it was being used to make some very unscrupulous people rich. None of this was your fault. It happened because your parents were fooled into thinking that they needed to register your birth and get a birth certificate for you. So they applied for a birth certificate, not understanding what would happen when they did. Well then, what did happen? According to the local authority, one, they lost ownership of their baby, in parentheses, you. Two, they allowed a straw man to be created. This is not something which they can be blamed for, as nobody told them it would or even could happen. Nor did anybody tell your parents what a straw man is or how it can be used against their baby. In actual fact, the registration is a contract which is, in reality, null and void because there was no full disclosure by the local authority, nor was there intent to contract on the part of your parents. The registration of a baby's birth passes ownership of the baby to the local authority and that, and that alone, allows the local authority to take the child away from the parents if they ever want to do that. This applies until the child reaches the age of maturity, set by the current legal statutes. Doing that is not lawful but after the birth has been registered, it is legal, and there is a world of difference between those two terms, a difference which it is very important that you come to clearly understand. So, what is a straw man? A straw man is a fictitious legal entity created with the hope that as the child grows up, he will be fooled into believing that he is actually the straw man in parentheses, which he most definitely is not, and pay all sorts of imaginary costs and liabilities which get attached to the straw man by con artists. How is a straw man created? Well, the mechanism involves that unnecessary birth certificate which the parents imagine is about and belongs to their baby, in parentheses, neither of which is actually true. If the baby has been named James, and the family name is Martin, then you would expect the birth certificate to have the name James Martin printed on it. If that is what is printed on it, then all is well, and it is a genuine birth certificate and nothing more. However, if any other name is there, then the document is not a birth certificate, but instead is the creation of a straw man masquerading as James Martin. The alternative entries might be any of the following examples, all capital letters, James Martin, Mr. James Martin, Martin, Mr. James, or anything else, which is not exactly James Martin and nothing else. Why create a straw man? The answer is in order to charge the straw man imaginary costs and penalties and fool the human James Martin into paying those amounts. These imaginary charges include income tax, council tax, inheritance tax, capital gains tax, road tax, import tax, value added tax, fuel levy, loan interest, bank charges, and anything else that full-time professionals can think up and are confident that you will not notice that you never agreed to pay and don't need to pay. Legalese. Legalese is a secret language invented to trick you. It uses English words, 
but attaches secret meanings to those words with the sole intention of stopping you from believing that what they are saying to you has nothing to do with the normal meaning in the English language. Their purpose is to cheat you and rob you. For example, they will ask to you, do you understand? In English, that means, do you comprehend what I am saying to you? And the automatic response would be, yes, meaning, I do comprehend what you are saying to me. But these sneaky, underhand people have changed the meaning in legalese to mean, do you stand under me? Meaning, do you grant me authority over you so that you have to obey whatever I tell you to do? What makes it even worse is the fact that they will never tell you that they have switched from English to legalese. And if that is not dishonest, underhand, and unscrupulous, then I don't know what is. If you answer the question believing that English is being spoken, then they pretend that you are contracting with them to become subordinate to them. Whether or not that is actually true is debatable because that is effectively a verbal contract between you and them. And for any contract to be valid, there has to be full and open disclosure of all of the terms of the contract and then unreserved acceptance by both parties. And in these cases, that has most definitely not occurred. But what is the point in all this? Well, this maneuver is intended to trick you into agreeing to represent your straw man. Why? Ah, now that's a good question. But to answer it takes a bit of explaining and you need to understand the overall situation. All humans are born equal with complete freedom of choice and action. If you live in the same place as a lot of other people, then there are a few restrictions which have grown up by common consent over time. These restrictions are for your protection and the protection of the other people living near you. These restrictions are called the law, in parentheses or more accurately, common law and they are few in number and very easy to understand. They are, one, you must not injure or kill anyone. Two, you must not steal or damage things owned by somebody else. Three, you must be honest in your dealings and not swindle anyone. These restrictions have resulted from hundreds of years of disputes which have been dealt with through using common sense and the opinions of ordinary people. They are the only limitations on you, and if you don't want to abide by them, then you need to go some isolated place and stay away from other people. Many people think that there are hundreds of other laws which they have to keep, in parentheses, and new ones every other day. But that is not so. Those other things are called statutes, and keeping them is optional for you. But human, but they are not optional for your fictitious straw man. And that is why the people who benefit from those things want to persuade you to represent your straw man and so become subject to all their invented restrictions and charges. So we have got to realize that if we are going to go back into history, we have got to use it as a force, as a positive force. History is such a force. It is like a religious thing. You become aware of these shattered fragments and parts of ourselves so that you could make yourself whole again. You cannot make yourself whole again by brooding 100% of the time on the darkness of the world. We are the light of the world. want to thank you for making it this far in the video. But could you please take a few seconds, if you haven't already, to drop us a like. It really helps to promote this content in the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing. And you'll be able to have a notification every time 
we drop content like this. I'll wait. Thanks. Right back into the content.